Hello fellow leggers, happy new year! Yeah, happy new year and although Christmas has gone, um, it's Panto's not far from our minds seeing as we're hanging out with a dame tonight. We are, we are seeing the dame at the Park Theatre. So stick around to find out how many stars. And whether it's break a leg or leg it. So hello, welcome back Leggers. We are back at the Park Theatre, which we haven't been to for a while. No, actually. and I always love it here and I really like, I'm so pleased when they've got something on that we really want to see. And this was one of these things that stood out for me because it's had a five star run at the Edinburgh Fringe just last year. Okay. And now it's transferred here to the park. Now the Dame is a one man show telling the tale of an aging pantomime Dame who's reflecting on the ghosts from the past and the truths that he spent his whole life trying to forget it sounds interesting Doesn't we've it? seen so many pantomimes yeah in so the past so it should be interesting <laughs> it's only turning panto on its head and seeing it from a particular perspective but with a brand new story that's okay. quite interesting the dame herself or himself maybe i should say is played by none other than former blue peter presenter and olivier award nominee peter duncan Ooh. i saw peter perform in a musical called betwixt some years ago so i've seen him on stage once before okay. you know how we had that whole thing um about um, audiences not being british not knowing what panto is I've got yeah. a feeling quite a few people not going to know what blue peter is do you know <laughs> Blue Peter? Well, how would you describe Blue Peter? It's what a is children's Peter? show, maybe aimed very at very British, yeah. it's old I'd school. I'd say it's man. sort of aimed at maybe eight to thirteen. That's and they're always doing practical stuff. Yeah, it's almost so like the Scouts of yeah, the TV. It is. It's like the Scouts on TV. They go on little day trips and they teach us about things they used they're to have the an act on. There's a famous clip about an elephant pooing on the floor. Do you know what? Look it up on YouTube. Put Blue Peter best moments. Hopefully, it'll give you an idea. <laughs> I was never into Blue Peter personally. I loved it. I'm, I'm thrilled that I'm getting to see an ex-Blue Peter presenter again and maybe there'll be a few more in the audience. Who How knows? How about you, Leggers? Blue Peter, thumbs up? Yay or nay? nay. Yay or nay? Um, it's written by Peter Duncan's daughter. Katie okay. Duncan and directed by former artistic director of the park and recent director of Eugenius Ian Talbot Ian Talbot yes um, so it's 75 minutes straight through no S interval oh brilliant so zippy one yeah no interval breakdown but do stick around to the end we'll be telling you all of our thoughts and find out how many stars and it's behind us <laughs> The show and the park theatre, because we It's behind you! We finished with the day, and that's a panto reference for anyone that didn't get that panto reference, but yes. it is panto reference. And there are some interactive moments in this play, quite surprisingly, actually. Interactive moment? Yeah, it, it sort of flits between. Um, it flitted quite... once. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be really specific Okay, here. it flitted between... It flit at one point. It flit. Between, Just the one singular flit. Yeah, with the audience participation. Yeah, between the sort of breaking of the fourth wall and then it becoming sort of an insular look into one man's mind as he kind of regresses to a younger version of himself, brought on by the fact that he's now playing panto in the town of his childhood, from what I could gather. Yes, um, so that is the story. I'm eager to know, what did you think? I thought there were some really interesting ideas. Um, I think that as a piece, as a concept, it sort of worked for me. Uh, in its execution, I'm just not sure the writing carried the concept enough and was strong enough to pull off what it was trying to achieve. Okay, how about you? Um, I enjoyed it early on. Um, I think that's where it's more interactive. It was more reminiscent of when you think of the Dame. It was such a uh, enthused and engaged and thrilling performance, so committed performance. Um, however, the piece changed about a, th a third of the way through and then it became about his childhood and him flitting between the roles of himself, his mother and his father, and then lost that content that contact almost with the different roles and, and that dame interaction, it became a different piece. Yeah. And that's where the piece he lost it for me. Yeah, it just started to loosen its sort of grip on what it was at that point. 
had it have continued in the vein that it, it, it sort of started off with in the first third, I think it could have been fascinating. I think as an expose and as a behind the scenes look of a Panto Dane's life and what it means to be that person, there's a really strong piece there. It just needed to carry on that way after the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I guess because it's the idea that he puts on this war paint to become this character and that actually behind every mask is usually quite a frail, and scared person. And it's a lot of insecurity. And, a lot of ins and, and it, it that's an actor's, that. sort of, surely that's an actor's lot, isn't it? Like, yeah. many actors are insecure. So that's what it's kind of exploring, yeah. I guess. But even the way it was done was a bit confusing at times. Yeah, so I was a bit like, find it confusing. Uh, he's, he's doing great and he's very committed and he's a bloody good actor. Yeah. But I don't quite know where we are or what's happening in the scene or where in the narrative this is. And I think that's the point. It's a fantastic... It's, it needs a fantastic actor just to be watchable because it's not within the writing. Being a one-man show. And being a one-man show. <laughs> and hats off to the director for taking on a piece like that because I've, you know, first-hand experience, of, and so have you, of directing small cast pieces. And if, as from a director's point of view, I mean, from an actor's point of view, it's a lot to learn, but from a director's point of view, to engage an audience when you've got such a limited amount of people on stage, it's a bloody hard job. I think it's more difficult than hiding behind a large ensemble um, piece. That was Ian Talbot. Ian Talbot as the well director, so well done. But yes, let's talk about Peter Duncan. Um, he is. Um, he will be known to the nation as a Blue Peter presenter. I did recognise him. Great. Now, the, as soon as, the name means nothing to me. I didn't really watch um, Blue Peter either, but seeing him, I was like, oh, you do look familiar. Mm. Okay. Well, and that's it. That's. I think I, I mean, my my grandmother would know who he was. Like, there are lots of people out there. That would, but I don't think many people would know or particularly understand that he's an actor. I know that's what I was thinking. I was thinking he's just a presenter. That's yeah. what most people know him of. That's, yeah. it's, it's, it's always a surprise surprising for it? us when we see people do you know in what, different roles. Do you know what else is a surprise? You what know, you mentioned that Blue Peter was like um, sort of a scouts thing. Yeah. I read in the um, in the in the program that yeah. he was a chief scout before he was a Blue Peter presenter. Had all the skills. He had all the see? skills, that's what all it was. All the skills. But if yeah. you were a scout or a brownie, you can be a Blue Peter presenter. So obviously not only was he a good scout and a good presenter, because he was a presenter for so long, but yeah, he's a bloody good actor. I mean, Olivier, really Olivier Award nominated. Um, he was also awarded an OBE in 2000. And, no, he wasn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's somebody should, else. That's somebody else. Um, <laughs> but he should be. No. He should be. <laughs> awarded an OBE. He has an Olivier Award nomination for what? Best Actor in a Musical um, play in The Card in 1995. I don't know it at all. I don't know it at all. Do you know no. The Card? If so, comment below. Was it any good? What was it like? He's also Huge due ones. to appear for the third time on Through the Keyhole. <laughs> Three times on Through the Keyhole. Spoiler. Surely you know he's in house by now, unless he moves a lot, right? Wow. Um, can we just talk about, um, go back to the director Ian Talbot at a moment, who was awarded an OBE in 2007. He, what? Yeah. He's kept that quiet. He has, hasn't he? Oh my goodness. Sir Ian Talbot. Are you a sir when you've got an OBE? I don't know. I don't Comment think below. So. Comment below. I don't Is know. It? I think it's I've just never a title. Been, I've, never, I've met a lot of queens, but not the queen, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so good work there. So where, where yeah. are we with this? We're saying he's a good actor. Yes. He gives some really good committed performances. Yes. He's going from younger, very young him to his very... Um, violent um, father and the fear between the two all in one scene so kind of dancing between it's a very physical throwing himself to the ground so you, you think of a marathon runner yeah. and what they have to go through to complete a marathon this for a performer I was thinking this is a performer's marathon he's giving so much the technique that is going on physically and mentally I mean in the his, show his vocal technique was great his, yeah in the yeah, show he great. says he, he's a tour de force and this piece is a he tour is, de force yeah. piece um, let's talk Same about the creatives for a row. Katie Duncan, writer. I think we've spoken enough about the script. Um, I've also noticed Georgia Duncan on sound recording and sound effects. Is this a family affair? Well, it's great. Is that another if it Duncan? Is. If so, it's great. Yeah, sounds were good. I, I, do you know what? I really loved the set. It was totally believable. Like I felt I was in the dressing room a dingy dressing of a dingy, room. not not an A-list theatre. You know, not a, not a big mainstream touring house. Yeah. More of a sort of backstreet seaside free to town resort what you'd expect of that and I was immersed in that set okay so set 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 design Peter Humphrey 
Well not done, a Duncan. Mr. Humphrey. Not a Duncan. <laughs> not a Duncan. Apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, let, let's wrap it up, I think. Well, you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give the dame. For the dame at the Park Theatre, we are going to give. Three! Three stars. Yeah, for this piece. A, a fairly shoddy, uneven script rescued by a, a, a wonderful performance by a fantastic actor that is Peter Duncan. I think if you are curious about delivering monologues and being a one-man show and the sort of the dynamic you have to portray to throw yourself from one character to another and keep things moving, he does that really well here. You will be hard pushed to find a better example of that. I think the words there were throwing himself. He was literally, he threw himself into that part. Um, and that was worth watching, worth seeing, just for the um, price of the entry ticket. Yeah, also the fact that when some guy walked in, we were like, oh, he <laughs> yeah. looks a bit like um, Jeremy Corbyn. Did he look a bit like Jeremy Corbyn? And then he took Corbyn. his hat off. And it was Jeremy, it was Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn. <laughs> so that was a bit of a something yeah. so in a very intimate. We space. don't know what he thought of it, so we can't say you know sponsored <laughs> by. But but yeah, he well that was a bit distracting at times having Jeremy Corbyn sat right there. He but seemed thoroughly. Uh, um, he seemed like he was enjoying himself. Engaged. Yes. In the piece. He did. But uh, this you nice can't help, can you? Night. Have you ever been in a theatre with somebody that you recognise yes. recognise face, and you you're watching the stage, but you just can't help just see what they think, like. Which famous people have you been in a theatre with? Yeah, let us know down below because it's always interesting. Isn't it? We sure also had Leslie Manville. Also Leslie Manville. All the stars here let at the park. Let us know your stories. Get yourself down here. Anyway, we're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again very soon. Bye. Bye.